We can also think about perfect squares um, in the sense of rational versus irrational numbers. So we've learned about types of numbers in the past. We know that we have real numbers and in a year or two, you'll learn about imaginary numbers, which is just a another circle. But for real numbers, we've talked a lot about rational numbers, integers, and whole numbers. So we know that rational numbers are numbers that can be written as a ratio. For example, they repeat if they're in a decimal form, they terminate in decimal form, they can be written as a fraction, they are a whole number. All of these are rational numbers because if it were to be plugged into a calculator, you can write every one of them as a fraction, which is what we're thinking about when we think of ratio. For example, I know that 1.3333333 repeated forever is the same thing as one and one third. Ooh, that's a very light marker. So one and one third, which is the same thing as four thirds. We know that 10 is just a whole number, so we can write it as a fraction over one. This one is already written as a fraction for us. And I know that 0.48 is the same thing as 48 one hundredths. So all of these can be written as a ratio or written as a fraction, so they're all rational. The other type of number we are going to think about is an irrational number. Irrational numbers cannot be written as a fraction. They are either going to be imperfect squares under the square root sign or have pi in there um, as a factor. So that might sound like it means nothing to you right now, but hopefully when we look at some examples, it'll make a little more sense. So I created this number line. On this number line, the numbers in green are my rational numbers. So these are our whole numbers, one, two, three, four. I know that one, the square root of one is also equal to one, so I put that in green because that's also a rational number. The square root of four, because four is a perfect square, that's a rational number. What's irrational are the numbers that are under the square root sign that are not perfect squares. For example, the square root of two. If you are to type that into your calculator, you would say, okay, the square root of two, and you get this really long number. That's telling me that this goes on for a really, 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 really long time. It goes on forever. And it's not gonna end by repeating, and it's not gonna just end like a terminating decimal does. All imperfect squares that are under the cube root, sorry, the square root sign are gonna give me these irrational numbers. The other type of irrational number is any number that has the pi symbol in it. So if pi, which is just a number, so if we look at it on our calculator, you can see, now I cannot find it on my calculator. There it is, okay. So pi, see how it's just like those other numbers we looked at? It just goes on for as long as the calculator will let it go. That's telling me that this is not terminating and it's also not repeating. So it is an irrational number. So let's look at some examples to classify irrational versus rational. So for this first one, I can see 61 times pi. Because pi is a factor, it's involved, we know 61 pi is irrational. 
So I'm gonna put an I for irrational and I'll put a R for rational. So here, so we have a little key, irrational. 42 is a whole number. Remember that whole numbers can be written as a ratio. They're, they terminate, right? 42 is just 42. So that's a rational number. Number three has the repeating bar. Because there is a repeat sign, I know that this is a repeating decimal. Remember that repeating decimals are rational. 101 is an imperfect square. It's not a perfect square. It's in between the perfect squares of 100 and 121, which means that the square root of 101 is irrational. We can also check that on the calculator if, it, if it's a calculator active portion. So if I put 101 under my square root sign, notice how I get all those numbers at the end. All those numbers tell me that the square root of 101 is irrational. For number five, we've got a repeating bar. So we know it's rational. We've got a fraction, which means it's rational. We have the pi symbol, which means it's irrational. So hopefully these, we're starting to get a little bit more of a hang of it. What we're looking at is just thinking, okay, repeated fraction, whole number. This is a repetition, so I know that's rational. Okay, repeated fraction, whole number. This is a fraction, so it's rational. Okay, repeated fraction, whole number. This is a whole number, so it's rational. Repeated fraction or whole number. This is not any of those. This dot, dot, dot without a bar at the top tells me that these numbers just continue and I do not know their end, which means there isn't an end, which means it's irrational. The square root is 17. 17 is not a perfect square. You can see that in our number line up here. So it's irrational. We've got another one of these dot, dot, dots, which tells me it's irrational. The square root of 64, hopefully we don't let this square root sign trick us because I know 64 is a perfect square. So that this is rational. One fourth is a fraction, it's rational. Square root of 25, 25 is a perfect square because five times five is 25, which means it's rational. So the only thing you're thinking about with irrational versus rational numbers is for rational, you can have whole numbers, you can have the repetition bar, you can have a fraction, or you can have a decimal that just ends, which this doesn't have an example of, but 0.48 was an example of that up here. And then irrational, you've got an imperfect square underneath the square root sign, you have a number that includes pi, you have dot, dot, dot.